fearing God. It says, the hour of his judgment is come. And see the might of God and the power of God. And, and see what God can do in bringing judgment to any rebellious sinner. It says, because of that, fear God and give glory to him. The hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. Now, as you look at this um, uh, understanding, you look at this subject of fearing God. For the people of the Old Testament, that, that was normal. That was, uh, that was clear. Because of the dispensation in which they lived, and because of the great, sweet, uh, judgment, urgent thing that came upon them, the fear of God, they were conscious of that. It's when you come to the New Testament, Many, many people, uh, they do not link the fear of God with New Testament doctrine, New Testament understanding. And uh, the people of God, what well, the New Testament dispensation is, it, we are saved, He is our Father, and we are His children. How can you fear God? And the people in the New Testament, they talk about being sanctified, we're sanctified and made holy. And so how can you fear God once you are sanctified? The people in the New Testament say, we are the children of God. And he has given us the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. What the Holy Ghost in us, and what the Comforter abiding and living within us, how can we fear God? And let's, let's, let's teach ourselves tonight. And let us look at the Word of God. We are saved. We have grace. We perceive of the love of God. Do we still need to fear God? Let the New Testament give us the answer that now, now that we are born again, now that we are children of God, and we rejoice in the grace of God. Grace and fear, do they go together? Let's see, in Hebrews chapter 12, Hebrews chapter 12, we are looking at verse 28, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28. Wherefore, we receive in our kingdom, which cannot be moved, let us have, have what? Grace. That's the New Testament. And this is what Christ brought on the cross of Calvary. Let us have grace, where, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and what? Godly fear. You see the grace, you see the godly fear. And then he says, why, why do we fear God? It says in verse 29, For our God is a consuming fire. Now you see many people, they only think about the love of God. He loves us so much, for God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And the understanding people have from that is, God is so loving, He has forgiven my sins. God is so loving, there is forgiveness with Him. And since he loves me and he forgives me, what do I need to fear? What do I need to fear him for? Let's look at Psalm 130, Psalm 130. We're looking at verse 4, Psalm 130, verse 4. It says, But there is what? Forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. There is forgiveness with thee. Now, when, when God gives us forgiveness, it does not to make us say, Hello, God, how are you today? That's, it doesn't make us familiar with God. Or to make God our equal, we fear Him. We say, This God is so high and He's so great. I could have been stricken dead. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. But it's so magnanimous, it's so merciful, it's so compassionate that he has pardoned my sin. And because of that, I have reverential fear for him. There is forgiveness with thee that thou mayest be feared. And then, after we're saved, we're also sanctified. When we're sanctified, it purifies our heart. It cleanses our heart. It gives us another heart. And now, after we're sanctified, do we need to fear God? Think about that. We're saved, and it says you have grace now. There must be godly fear of that grace. And now you are forgiven because you are forgiven. Psalm 130 verse 4, that thou mightest be feared. Now we are sanctified. Look at the promise of sanctification in, Je in Jeremiah chapter 32. Jeremiah chapter 32. I'm reading from verse 38. 
And they shall be my people, and I will be their God. What a joy we have that we're not the people of God. They shall be my people, and I will be their God. And I will give them one heart and one way. I will give them one heart and one way. Why? That they may fear me forever. Not only in the Old Testament, that they may fear me in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, beyond the New Testament, for ages, generation after generation, dominion after dominion, kingdom after kingdom, forever, that they may fear me forever. You see that, that, that was saved, and then was sanctified, and it gives us one heart, it gives us a heart of flesh, it gives us a new heart. It says, the reason I'm sanctifying you, the reason I'm taking away that Adamic nature, the reason I'm making you holy, is so that you'll fear me forever for the good of them, and of their children after them, in verse 40, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them, that I will not turn away from them to do them good, but I will put my fear in their hearts. This is the promise of sanctification, that it gives us this clean heart, new heart, righteous heart, holy heart, purified heart. He gives them one heart, and in giving them that heart, he says, I'll put my fear in their hearts, that they shall not depart from me. I pray that God will help us will not depart from the Lord in Jesus' name. And now, at what of when we are baptized in the Holy Ghost? After all, we know that when the Holy Ghost comes, He is the Comforter. We are filled with the Holy Ghost according to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 16. And I will pray the Father, and He shall give you another Comforter, that He may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but she know him, because for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. He gives us the comfort of the spirit of God. After we are baptized in the Holy Ghost, and we have that comfort of the spirit, I understand now, we are saved we have grace, must have the fear of God. I understand now, we're sanctified. He gives us a new heart, a clean heart, a purified heart, and He still puts in us the fear of God. What if we're not baptized in the Holy Ghost? And we have the comfort of living within us, and we're walking in the comfort of the Holy Ghost. After that comfort has come, any fear of God, look at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, verse 31. Acts, chapter 9, verse 31. Then at the church's rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified and walking how? Tell me out loud. Walking in the fear of the Lord and in what? If the comfort of the Holy Ghost or multiply. The comfort of the Holy Ghost that comes or the Holy Ghost baptism that was there. And yet they were walking in the fear of the Lord. You see, there, there's no experience we may have. And there's no understanding we may have. There's no spiritual attainment that we can possess that the privilege or privilege we have in the kingdom of God or whatever intimacy we have with the God of heaven. There must still be that fear of God. God in our hearts. We'll come to point number two. A clear command. A clear command to fear God the most high. A clear command to fear God the most high. Now, when we when we're talking about fear, sometimes when you read your Bible, you have to understand what the Lord is saying. You know, sometimes the Bible will say, fear not. Have you heard that before? Fear not. And then you, you come to Genesis, it says, fear not. You go to Exodus, it says, fear not. And then you come to First Samuel, fear not. Then you come to First Kings, fear not. You are coming to eyesight after 41. It says, fear not. I am with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And I once we hear that part of the word, and it says, fear not, then we think that means, fear not is fear not. What it means is, 
fear not the enemy. It doesn't say not don't fear God. It says fear not about your problem. Fear not about the sickness. Fear not about the challenge. Fear not about the Philistines. Fear not about the Amalekites. Fear not about this. Fear not any man. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. That's what he's talking about. Fear not. But when it comes to your relationship with God, we cannot say fear not. Let me show you. Exodus chapter 20 verse 20. You're going to see those two things right there. Exodus chapter 20 verse 20. You must open this. It's very, very important. Exodus 20 verse 20. Have you opened it? Tell me so I can read. Thank you very much. Exodus 20, 20. Notice what we're talking about. And Moses said unto the people, what? Fear not. For God is come to prove you that that what? His fear may be before your faces that ye sin not. Do you see the two together there? Moses spoke to the people and Moses said, fear not. Why did he say that? Look at verse 18. In verse 18, and all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they, moved, they removed and stood afar off and they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear, but let not God speak with us, lest we die. He said, Fear not, you are not going to die. That's what it means. Fear not, the thunderings is not to, kill, not to kill you. Fear not, all the lightnings you see, they are not supposed to kill you. Fear not, God loves you and God wants to protect you and God will preserve you. Don't fear any trouble, don't fear any death and don't fear any calamity. Fear not, but the Lord is appearing before you that, in that verse 20, is fear may be before your eyes, before your faces, that ye sin not which means then we don't fear evil we don't fear satan we don't fear man we don't fear any problem we don't fear any circumstance but we still fear god that's the command that has given us leviticus chapter 25 i'm reading from verse 17 leviticus 25 let's look at verse 17 in verse 17 it says ye shall not therefore oppress one another but thou shalt fear thy god for i am the lord your god that's what it means don't oppress anyone why because you fear god thou shalt fear the lord your god this is the charge of god what if i'm going to school with the charge of a president the president of our country and I know that this child is a beloved child to the president of our country. And then I happen to be the senior prefect of that school. And I know that this is child of president. I'll be very careful because of the honor and the respect I have for our president. I will take care of his child and not oppress the child. The same thing, we're children of the king. And every child of God is a child of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And the Lord is saying, the fear I want you to have for me is not the fear when the thunder strikes. That's not the fear. It's not the fear when there's a terrible rain and then the wind is taking the roof of houses. That's not the fear I want you to have. The fear I want you to have for me is look at my children and don't oppress my children and don't persecute my children and don't annoy my children. Take care care of my children more than you will take care of the child of your president in your country that's what it means when it says we should fear him it's telling us in deuteronomy chapter chapter 6 deuteronomy chapter 6 and we're looking at verse 13 deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 13 thou shalt fear the lord thy god and serve him and shall swear by his name that's the fear he's talking about we fear him and we serve him uh, you know, you know. Sometimes uh, you are at home and you are a little bit weak in the body, and you know that you know you, you go to a place of work, and you know they are retrenching people, they are removing people from their work because they say I want to cut off, uh, you know, some of these people that are really are just taking salary, and we don't really need them. And now you are a little bit weak, but you have not told them in the place of work you are not coming. And you know that they are, they are looking for the people they are going to retrench. 
what the little weakness you have, little problem you have, you'll dress up, you still go to work. Won't you go? I said, will you not go? Oh, you don't want to lose your job. That's a fear. He says, now, if you can do that for secular employment, if you can do that to a secular employer, you have a little bit of problem, a little bit of pain, a little bit of pressure, and you have to serve the Lord. The same fear that you are for your employer. I don't want them to terminate my appointment. And because of that, although I'm feeling a little bit weak, but I have to go so that they will not uh, stop my employment. It says in that same way, thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him. Don't use little, little excuses. And say, because of this, I cannot serve the Lord. Because of this, I cannot serve the Lord. Fear the Lord and serve the Lord. And that's what the Lord is telling us there. He tells us in Psalm 33, verse 8. Psalm 33, verse 8. Now he tells us how many are to fear the Lord. Is it only people who are, you know, in the church or people outside there? Psalm 33, verse 8. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of Him. It says all the earth. Virtually, literally, everyone were to fear the Lord. It's not just some special group of people that have to fear the Lord. We ought to fear the Lord. I'm going to ask you a question. Who are the people to fear the Lord? How limited is this commandment to fear the Lord? How universal is this commandment to fear the Lord? Number one, all the children of God are commanded to fear the Lord. All the children of God are commanded to fear the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 24. Deuteronomy chapter 6. We're reading from verse 24. In verse 24 it says, And the Lord commanded us, all his children, to do all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God. For our good, for our good, whether it's in the private, in the secret, or in the public, is for our good. Whether people are there or not, this is for our good. Because we know the Lord is watching us. His eyes behold all the actions of men. Because of that, whether my wife is there or not, my husband is there or not, my pastor is there or not, my leader is there or not, members of the church are there or not, I know this is what the word of the Lord commands. And because that's what the word commands, that's the reason why I fear the Lord, I honor him, I obey him. It says, for our good, that he might preserve us alive life as it is at this day. Number two, all the beneficiaries of the promises of God concerning sonship, all the beneficiaries of the promises of the Lord. Those are the people to fear him. We're looking at second at second Corinthians chapter six. Second Corinthians chapter six verse seventeen. Wherefore come out from among them and be you separate, says the, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean sin, and I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Move on to chapter 7, verse 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, you are a beneficiary of the promises of God. Having these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness and of the flesh and spirit perfecting holiness how in the fear of god new testament now new testament perfecting holiness in the fear of god and that's uh, the commandment he has given us now number three all true believers in christ all followers of the lord jesus christ all the friends of christ all the disciples of christ they are to they are to fear the lord we're looking at luke chapter 12 luke chapter 12 and we're reading from verses 4 and 5. luke chapter 12 verse 4 and i say unto you my friends here is the lord jesus christ talking was he talking to the pharisees sadducees publicans who was he talking to his own disciples, my friends. He says, but, and I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them which kill the body. And after that, have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him. This Christ talking. Talking to his own disciples. 
are talking to those already children of God in the kingdom of God. Christ says, fear him who after which after he has healed has power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Number four, all the saints of God are commanded to fear him. Those who have been washed in the blood of the Lamb, cleansed in the blood of the Lamb, purified by the blood of the Lamb, and they are saints of God. These saints are supposed to fear the Lord. In Psalm 34, we're reading verse 9. Psalm 34, reading from verse 9. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints. You know, there are people that have the idea and say, well, I'm not a sinner, why should I fear God? I'm a child of God, saved and sanctified, why should I fear God? I'm a disciple of Christ, why should I fear God? I'm a saint, a saint of the Lord, why should I fear God? That's exactly the reason why you need to fear the Lord, reverence the Lord, honor the Lord, exalt the Lord. And fear the Lord to the point you say, no, I will not sin, I will not do any evil because I'm a saint of God. I fear the Lord. Psalm 34 verse 9. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no one to them that fear the Lord. Number 5. All who have been blessed by God are commanded to fear him. If God has blessed you at any time, save you, he has blessed you. He has healed you. He has blessed you. He has delivered you. He has blessed you. He has protected you. He has blessed you. He has provided for you. He has blessed you. He has put you in a conspicuous position to serve Him. That's a blessing. If the Lord has blessed you at any time, then you are one of those people that are supposed to fear the Lord because of the blessing He has granted you. We're looking at 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 24. 1 Samuel chapter 12. 12 verse 24 only fear the lord and serve him in truth with all your heart for consider how great things he has done for you when the lord has blessed you you don't become so familiar and then hold you in contempt after all he has to bless me after all i enjoyed this i enjoyed this i enjoyed that in the kingdom the very fact that the Lord has singled you out and made you, a, and made you a partaker of the blessing of the Lord, that should make you to fear the Lord. Only fear the Lord and serve Him in truth with all your heart. For consider how great things He has done for you. Number six, all the inhabitants of the world are commanded to fear the Lord. All the inhabitants of the world, if you're still alive, an inhabitant of this earth and the Lord has given you the solid ground on which you walk and the Lord is supplying 